actually come up here on the ladder and continue to graft up in the tree. I cut off a small branch here and grafted on an apple called Hokato. It looks like it's gonna take. This branch here has four or five different grafts on it. The most recent was two years ago. The graft is right there. It's almost disappeared. The tree itself is a golden delicious. There are probably 18 different apples grafted onto it. First, I'd like to talk about the tools that I use grafting. The most important thing is to keep your knife sharp. You can use a kitchen knife as long as it has a straight blade, not a curved blade. I sharpen my knife after two or three grafts. Um, really, you should start with it sharp every day and sharpen it a few times while you're working. This is a diamond file, so I put it against a surface where it's stable. Just give it a few short passes. On a knife, you sharpen both sides. You also want a good pair of bypass pruners. Bypass pruners are the kind of pruners that don't land with a blade like that, which will smash the branch, but slices it like that. So I recommend Felcos. You can buy replacement blades. They can be sharpened. They last forever. On a pair of bypass clippers, only sharpen the beveled side. Never sharpen the other side. This side is meant to remain flat. I invested in a pair of Kevlar gloves. These are butcher's gloves. I found them on the internet. You can't cut them. Uh, last week I forgot to put my gloves on and I went up to graft my apple tree and I ended up with three stitches. So I always recommend that you wear hand protection, even if you've been doing this for a long time. After you finish your graft, you're going to want to tape it. This is something called buddy tape. Also, it's available on the internet. It's made of paraffin. It stretches remarkably. The advantage of this tape is that it seals the graft very well. It adheres to itself, and it disintegrates in sunlight. So you don't have to climb up on a ladder and tape your tape off a year later. You can also use vinyl tape, which is available at a nursery. Vinyl tape is stronger. It has some stretch, and you have to remember to cut it off several months after your graft is healed it will eventually constrict the graft. You will also want to label your graft. Eventually you might have 10 or 12 different varieties on one tree. I find that an old Venetian blind makes a terrific label. It's aluminum, it will last forever. Write on it with pencil. Don't use a permanent marker because that fades. And tie it on with something that's not going to rust. This is some garden wire. This is my cyan wood. The cyan wood is the variety of fruit that you want to graft onto the rootstock. The rootstock is the part that, that will be in the ground. I collected this when it was dormant, in January or February, before the buds have started to swell. Your, your cyan wood has to be dormant, and it has to stay dormant until you graft. So you wrap it in a moist paper towel, put it in a plastic bag, and put it in the refrigerator. When I look outside and the trees have started to blossom, it's time to graft because the sap has started to rise in the rootstock and the graft will heal much more quickly than if I graft in the middle of winter. It doesn't matter if my rootstock has started to leaf out, but if this has started to leaf out, I can't use it. But this is dormant, I can see. For this peach rootstock, I'm gonna do what's called a whip and tongue graft. Whip and tongue graft is good when both the cyan and the rootstock are about the same size. They don't have to be exactly the same size, but the cyan cannot be bigger than the rootstock. This is the cyan. This is the rootstock. This is the variety I'm grafting on. It happens to be an apricot, but I can graft an apricot onto a peach. First thing I'm gonna do is make a very steeply angled cut with a very sharp pair of pruners. I wanna make a similar cut on my cyan. It's important to remember what's up and what's down. If you graft it on upside down, your graft will fail. So look to see that the vegetative buds are pointing upwards. Then you know you have the right direction. So I'm going to try and match the angle of this cut with a similar cut on my cyan. That's a pretty good 
pretty good match. This is a little smaller, but that's all right. I'm gonna rub off this one bud right here, which would be within the tape. I don't need it to get in the way. Again, what I'm gonna try and match up is this little green layer right inside the bark here and the little green layer here, which is the living tissue. And that's the tissue that's gonna connect. If it's too small to fit on both sides, I can just fit it over on one side. That's a pretty good fit. Now I'm going to put a tongue in the cyan and the rootstock. So I'm going to put my gloves on. This is probably where most people cut themselves. And I'm going to make a small slice about two thirds of the way from the bottom to the top of this oval. And just very carefully rock the knife back and forth because I don't want it to slip. The purpose of this tongue is just to hold the two pieces together while I'm wrapping them. So there's my tongue. I go down just about to the bottom of this oval. And I do the same thing on the rootstock. Just rock it slowly. Now I have a tongue on the rootstock. I'm going to spread it a little bit apart and then slide the two together. This one turned out to be a good fit. The canopy matches up all the way around. I don't see any air or daylight when I look through the graft. And I'm going to wrap it fairly tightly to press these flaps together. I start well below the graft. Just wrap it around itself. And be very careful when you're wrapping not to knock your sign off. That's pretty easy to do. I'm going to pull it tight as I go around the grafted part. Pull it every time I go around pressing those tissues together. When they make contact with each other, they heal together. So there's my graft. The next thing I want to do is put something over the scion to keep it from losing moisture while it heals. I use press and seal from the grocery store. It sticks to itself. It just keeps the humidity in. especially the top and all the way down to below the graft. Instead of using press and seal to keep the moisture in your scion, you can use grafting wax. It's a very sticky wax. It's available at nurseries. It has to be heated. I use one of these beverage heaters. I'm going to dab the top end of the scion, which has been cut, and moisture will come out of there. And I'm also going to cover the graft area from below the tape to above the tape to seal in the moisture in the graft. Some people paint the whole scion. I don't do that. It's very, very sticky. Don't get it on your clothes. Then I'm going to shade, shade my scion. And I'm done. 